in this lecture, we are going to discuss types of measurement. In the chemistry classroom and lab, we'll use the international system of units um, to describe measurable quantities like length, volume, mass, temperature, and time. We'll also use the metric system a lot. And the metric system and the international system of units are pretty similar. The metric system has the same units for um, the international system of units for length and time. Um, and there's some variation between volume, mass, and temperature. And we'll, we'll actually typically use the metric system in the lab more for volume. We'll work in milliliters or liters, um, and we'll use grams to describe the mass of an object typically. Although when we work with um, the temperature of something, we'll, we'll typically use the international system of units, um, unit of Kelvin. Um, because it has only positive values associated with it. And we'll walk through each of these and we'll get lots of experience in the lab um, making measurements of each of these different types of um, observable properties of an object. I'd like to point out though that a measurement is two things. It is a value, like a number like five, and it's also a unit, um, in this case, feet. And we do not have a measurement unless we have both of these. Just stating the number five doesn't give me as a reader any information about what that number is associated with. So the units of feet then tell me that I'm talking about a type of length. And this might seem um, obvious that to report a number we need to give both the numeric value and what that number represents. Um, but it's really easy when you know what you're talking about to leave off the unit. We'll also find that units are really helpful in problem solving when we review dimensional analysis in this chapter. Um, so this is my word of warning. Always remember to write down your units. So let's walk through um, physical properties that we can actually measure and observe. Length, volume, mass, temperature, and time. Um, and we'll add some more like density a little bit later in this chapter. Length is a measurement that's pretty intuitive for most of us. It measures distance. We typically measure it in feet and inches here in the United States, but most of the world uses the metric system, looking at centimeters, meters or kilometers to judge distance. Mass is the amount of matter in an object and we typically think of this as weight, which is actually the force that matter feels due to gravity on earth. And so the weight of something would change um, depending on the force of gravity. So if you went to another planet, you would weigh a different amount. But the amount of mass you have would be the same, no matter what planet you were on. Um, and so we'll measure mass in units of grams or kilograms or milligrams um, in our, our class and in lab. And when we, we measure it, we'll typically use an electronic balance um, like this one that gives us an actual numeric uh, reading for um, the mass of the object that we place on the scale. Volume, um, if you remember back to your math class, is you typically represented as the length times the width times the height of an object. So if we took a one centimeter cube, it would be one centimeter times one centimeter times one centimeter, which would give us one centimeter cubed. And so centimeter cubed would be the units for volume. Well, that centimeter cubed is cc if you are working in a medical setting and measuring volume with a syringe. This stands for centimeter cubed. The c and c as the start of the letters uh, for the both words, or the start of the first letter of each word. Well, one centimeter cubed is also one milliliter, and this is the unit that we typically use in a chemistry lab. Um, and so if you think of a milliliter, just think of a one centimeter box. Um, and we'll have lots of ways of measuring volume in the lab. We'll use volumetric flasks, 
pipettes to deliver a specific volume or burettes to deliver a specific volume. We'll use graduated cylinders a lot. We'll also use syringes in the lab as well uh, to measure volume. We'll measure temperature using a thermometer in the lab, and that'll tell us how hot or cold something is. And really, when we're measuring temperature as a chemist, we're interested in temperature being proportional to the energy, uh, to, to kinetic energy. And we'll spend more time um, with kinetic energy with, in chapter six, but it's going to be the energy of motion. Time, um, I spend a lot of time thinking about how to define time. Um, I settled on uh, using a definition that is a non-spatial continuum that's measured in terms of events which succeed one another from past to present to future, which is a linear definition of time. Um, again, this is something that's divorced from our idea of space. Uh, and if you wanna go down a little bit of a rabbit hole on what is time and what does it mean to modern physics, um, you could spend a lot of time on the internet looking at this. And if you want a place to start, Try Googling um, now and the physics of time, uh, which is just an NPR article by uh, Richard Mueller. Um, in our case, in the chemistry lab, we'll typically use stopwatches to measure time in units of seconds or minutes or hours. Uh, and we'll see that as a progression of events one after another and a way to represent a systematic way or a, a regular intervals of how those events proceed. 